It has been said that a hero shall arise whenever England is in her hour of greatest need. King Arthur, Sir Francis Drake, Winston Churchill, all men who have faced the challenge and triumphed. But now, England stands before our greatest foes yet. With the ever-growing tide of Mountain Dew and Cool Ranch Doritos sponsored game reviews, who will be left to stand up for what is good and pure and ready to point out what is fucking stupid in video games? Once again, a hero shall rise to take the mantle of legend and save England from her foes. God help us all. Now, in spite of what most people say, I don't think you can actually argue the functionality of modern shooters. Games like the Battlefield and Call of Duty series may only want you to chase a bad guy down a corridor and then shoot him because he looks bad, but you know, given their limited scope and ambition in terms of that, I think they do it fairly well. Now, it would seem strange if I was to say to myself ten years ago that I miss World War II shooters, because back then they were absolutely ubiquitous. Any company wanted to make a quick amount of money, you just slap a World War II theme on top of a really poor shooter, and you have at least made money. Why? Because they're World War II shooters. You shoot Nazis, it's not that difficult. Now with the premier World War II franchises Medal of Honor and Call of Duty both staking a claim in the modern or futuristic shooter category, World War II shooters are actually becoming quite an acquired commodity. Of course, most of the games back then covered the same sort of areas. You had Stalingrad, you had D-Day, you had North Africa if they were feeling a bit exotic, but that was basically it. The reason I'm bringing this up is because Enemy Front had the potential to cover something that was very rarely covered in video games. The Resistance in Occupied Europe. The last game I remember doing anything like this was the Saboteur, in which you played a fighting Irishman giving Nazis them paid and bringing cholera back to Paris. Oh, Jesus and Begora. The only major shooter I can remember doing anything like this was Medal of Honor Underground back on the PS1. So, could this game tell the fascinating story of resistance to Nazi tyranny and bring a whole new, fresh perspective on the World War II narrative in video games? Well, I'm reviewing it here, so what the fuck do you think? The game begins in Warsaw during the uprising of 1944 and- Wait, 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 wait a minute. Did that guy just flip me the V? He did! Five seconds into this game and it's already telling me to go fuck myself. Oh, you want to get nuts, game? Come on, let's get nuts! So we're introduced to our protagonist, Robert Hawkins, an American journalist. What I'm about to tell you is a story. A story of ordinary men and women all across Europe who have stood up to Nazi tyranny and oppression. Yes, we couldn't just see their stories. No, we need a big, strong American hero to explain it all for us. This is my mother's homeland. Oh, he's part Polish. Well, that's fair enough then. All the emotional connection to the plot I ever needed. We're thrown almost immediately into the action, and a big problem with this game quickly rears its head. The action scenes, especially in these big, more open-looking environments, look like a massive clusterfuck. And maybe it's just my broken eyes, but through most of these scenes, I can often barely see what I'm meant to be shooting at. Now, if this were a stylistic choice, I think it would be interesting, but I really don't think it is. I just think they didn't bother to make your target stick out from the background. Wow, war may change, but the way we fight it sure doesn't. This way. Voices from the underground, right? You went through my things? Jeez, that's almost as bad as the Nazis murdering all those people. I thought we had something, man. Rosetta Hokies, you're late. The Germans aren't on our timetable. Better late than not at all. Policy of your President Roosevelt, I believe. My thoughts exactly. You will not be disappointed. Really? This guy knew exactly what I wanted. Is, is he psychic? Do they have psychic soldiers in the home army? Actually, you know what? I'm gonna test this. Give me a second. I'm getting here. My thoughts exactly. You will not be disappointed. Let's move. Ah, no. It's much easier to explain than that. Lazy game design! So you're tasked with aiding the home army in various areas, one of which involves rescuing a priest from the Nazis. So how does our hero go about this? Maybe discreetly find his way around and neutralise the threat without risking the priest's life? Or maybe just bust down the door and spray the room with bullets hoping that the Holy Father's guts don't end up pat-aid against the wall? Now I come to think of it, do you not have a more efficient way of breaking down the door? I mean, throughout the game, whenever you wish to breach a door, he always shoulder barges it. Wouldn't that be a bit of a stupid thing to do? I mean, considering it assumes none of the German soldiers ever have a gun trained anywhere near the door while you're charging through defenceless and neutralising your ability to fight back for the time it takes to bring your gun back to the firing position. Oh, and here I better deal with the AI in this game as well right off the bat. It's fucking awful. 
Guy takes five bullets thudding into his back and doesn't react. Standing right next to somebody and them not noticing you at all after being involved in a massive gunfight right in front of them. Advance towards you one at a time so you can gun them down as they come through the doorway. Why did you bother animating him closing the door after himself? Is he just that polite? Also, considering the number of resistance fighters that appear around open manholes in this city, you'd think the Germans would have pieced this together by now. I write for a living. I know how this works. I've covered wars, you know. You're then given the option to assault the church one of two different ways. And yes, I did go and check if it makes a difference, and apart from appearing in a slightly different place on the map, there is no difference. That's the choice in this game, folks. After clearing the church, in spite of at least one enemy still being displayed on the map, it's time for a flashback. Because of my anti-fascist journeys, I was already an enemy of the Nazis, and people were being killed for a lot less than that. So my photographer and I were making a run for the Swiss border. And that's when things took a fateful turn. Somehow I can't help but think that the Germans would be wary of executing an American citizen, particularly if he's a somewhat famous journalist. America was still officially neutral in the conflict at the time, and it seems to me it would likely cause more problems than it would solve. Simply lock him up or deport him back to America. Oh, and in case you don't know the Nazis are evil, here's them executing people. I'll harm you! Son of a bitch! Come on. We must go now. We must get away from here. No. I'm going in for a closer look. What? No, 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 you fool! C come back! Oh, and look, the cowardly Frenchman wanting to abandon his countrymen and women while the brave American strikes out on his own to save them. I'm glad this game is busting all kinds of stereotypes. Oh, and at this point, the game crashed. Wonderful. An interesting point that this game has but fails to utilise is its stealth and binocular mechanics. You can use binoculars to scout ahead and spot the enemy so you can plan your movements accordingly, which seems like a good idea, but in a game where the enemies blend into the background so well it basically becomes useless. In fact, I found the most effective method was just to scan randomly and wait till something popped up on your map. This links into the issue with the stealth system. Not being able to see where the enemy is makes it also very difficult to tell when they're spotting you, making stealth feel somewhat arbitrary. This is combined with the fact that when you're in a gunfight, it is again usually easier to tell where someone is simply by letting them shoot at you, meaning you will want to keep all the enemies in front of you if possible. And since the stealth is effectively impossible to maintain, in spite of your incredible ability to stealth kill through a car, as enemies often stay close enough together so you'll be unable to kill one of them without the other raising the alarm, so if you did attempt stealth you'd end up being shot from multiple directions without knowing how to avoid it. So in the end, it simply becomes the easier option to open fire first and kill everyone you can. So you decide to chase after the resistance lady in order to help get you and your cameraman into neutral Switzerland. Also, I like how they can spot me from 500 yards away, but not from inside a doorway. Please! My wife! Help her! Germans attacked us for aiding the partisans! She's in a house! That way! Help her! Please! I like how, in these dramatic situations, the person always dies right after telling the protagonist what to do. I'll do what I can. Okay, so he loudly announced, in English, what he plans to do to a dead body. While he knows there are German soldiers in the area. Oh, and look, they've immediately discovered him. Gee, I guess maybe he's a fucking idiot. Don't worry, Eva. I'm sure we will find him. Pierre is strong. Yeah, unless he's strong enough to withstand half a magazine to the gut, I wouldn't get the lady's hopes up too much, buddy. Maybe because you're charging at us with guns, Fritz! So after clearing out this village to aid the resistance and putting about 30 bullets into this guy with a machine gun, you head to a German stronghold to rescue the resistance leaders. Alright, Hawkins. From here on, the only way you and Obrock are getting out alive is if you kill every damn Nazi you see. I like how he makes no pretensions about saving the man with her, just save the woman because she can help us. What a hero. Tell me what I want, Dobrek, or he died! Tell me! Never. We will never submit to you! Oh yes, really brave to be defiant when someone else is going to take the bullet for you, lady. After fighting your way through the Nazi whores, you eventually rescue her and she then proceeds to hold your cowering and clearly unarmed cameraman at gunpoint. Wow, lady, way to make the Nazis look not so dickish. There aren't any stories in Switzerland, Dubois. You go. Camera stays. What are you going to do? I'm staying. 
I finally found my next big story. I'm going to cover the resistance movement from the inside. I've got the ultimate scoop with guaranteed front page headlines. Okay, there was a lot wrong with this mission, so let's get the facts out of the way before I deal with the story idiocy. For one thing, this level seems to imply it is taking place during the fall of France in the summer of 1940. Except there was nowhere near the level of resistance that is being portrayed here. Enemy Front is already making it look as if the local resistance is organised and led, much like our view of the resistance later in the war. This was not true of the early days. I mean, how could it be? Many of the resistance cells later in the war were at least aided by trained specialists or given equipment, orders or some kind of support from the British government to aid them. But that wouldn't have happened in June 1940. Also, even discounting that, any French resistance would need a while to become organised enough to fight back against the Germans. And even then it was usually sabotage or highly localised raids, not standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with the fucking Wehrmacht. To continue the factual inaccuracy of this mission, you are at one point ordered to use a Panzerfaust to take out a German tank. Which would be okay except for the fact that Panzerfaust didn't enter service until 1940-fucking-3! Okay then, on to the main story issue. Why would they let him stay in the resistance, and how does he expect to cover the resistance and send articles back? He doesn't appear to speak a word of French, and besides having some improbable fighting skills, trust me, we shall cover that idiocy later, he doesn't seem like he would contribute much besides being very quickly captured and possibly causing the whole local resistance movement to be compromised. Secondly, how does he expect to get these stories back? Yes, I know the Allies did send some correspondence into Europe at times, but I would believe that they had at least some training or preparation before going there, and would have had some method of relaying the messages back to Britain, such as aeroplanes which did sometimes land in France in the night to pick up or deliver agents. Hawkins had no connection to the British or American governments. What does he expect to do, just mail the articles home and hope the Germans respect his privacy? How the fuck does he expect to achieve this? But if I die, I know it was for the cause I believe in. Can you say the same? Yes, I can. Wealth and fame. That was a really easy question. Hit move another lady. Back in Warsaw, we take stock of the situation. As usual, we are fucked. Oh well, that's an inspiring statement then. Oh great, a fixed turret section where I can't see shit. This'll be fun. Once again, this game's odd concessions to reality. You have to reload the machine gun, which never really happens in these sections, but you don't have to burst fire to avoid overheating. Which is what happens in a lot of other games. Again, this game seems to show signs that it should have been one type of game, but then got turned into another. You know, when a game puts you in a sniper section, it usually has the common decency to give you a fucking sniper rifle! Honestly, I spent five minutes trying to find a sniper rifle, and the best I could find was simply a rifle. Seriously, Warsaw could have burned to the fucking ground for the time it took me to comb this fucking church, and I couldn't find it. Though, of course, my lack of presence had zero effect on how the battle went. Also, at one point I got to one of the towers and the game froze for about a minute. Which brings up another issue with this game, it has a tendency to lag and freeze, particularly on these admittedly well-made but odd loading screens. Now, I don't know if it's due to my capture software, but it does tend to lag even without it, so I'm blaming the game. It doesn't help that my capture button seemed to be some kind of quick load to checkpoint button, as it always sent me back to the last checkpoint and there was no way to change it. Which was lovely. Though, to be fair, I don't know why they need me here at all. This guy soaks up more bullets than a black guy in an American police station. Fuck it, let this guy lead the resistance. I think he's earned it. There's also no real clear objective when it comes to defending the front. Now, while it's refreshing to not have stuff pop up every two seconds telling you what to do, with games like this, that you're not entirely sure if they're programmed correctly, it just kind of makes me wonder if it's broken again. Also, I'm fairly certain you can't one-shot a Tiger II with a Panzerfaust to the turret. Anyway, after repelling the main attack, the church gets hit by... Stuka! And we fight one last wave before being catapulted into a flashback. Nope. I said I'm gonna take out that train. I'm gonna take out that train. Okay, why did you agree to take out the train? On your own? For a story? Why not cover what the others are doing then? Don't fuck this up, newspaper men. Oh, they have tension. I wonder if this will resolve in some kind of romantic sub- She never appears in the game after this. Well, thank you for that well-fleshed-out and likeable character enemy front. I care so much. Goodbye, my friend. Oh, and goodbye, friend, whom we knew so well. Again, there are hints of a much deeper game here, such as the attempt to humanise the German soldiers by giving them sympathetic dialogue. To merely follow with it, FUCK IT, KILL em ALL! <laughs> Another odd thing is occasionally when you snipe someone, you go into this sniper elite type bullet cam, Though, of course, it's nowhere near as epic as Sniper Elite's brutal kills. I did check this out, and the developer CI Games did have this camera effect in their previous games in the Sniper Ghost Warrior series. However, that came out after the original Sniper Elite, so I'm still calling them out on it. So you take some explosives that the Germans just happen to have hanging around. Huh. Seems a bit odd for a random German unit to just carry enough explosives to level a bridge with them, but okay. Wait, did the camera just take damage from the bridge falling on it? 
Or do we just have a secret invisible cameraman who was standing a bit too close to this fallen colossus? Oh, and yeah. How the fuck did I get up here? Seriously, I just teleported up here. Am I magical? What, did I climb up or something? Why would I even do that? How did I get over the wreckage and the fire that burns me whenever I go near it? Oh look, Bob Dylan must have been here. I also like how these guys a couple of hundred yards away seem completely unaware of the exploding bridge slash derailed train issue. But hey, you can kill people right in front of other people and they don't seem to care, so maybe the Nazis were just really apathetic. You know a game is good when you can just run past all the enemies to get to the end. Now the next two missions have absolutely no setup at all. You just continue into the valley to assassinate officers and assault a chateau for... some reason. Seriously, the closest explanation is a line of dialogue from a random German guard. If you didn't have subtitles, you wouldn't even know why you were killing these people at all. Except the fact they're Nazis, of course. Ah! The Germans have developed the power to transmorph guns through solid objects! Run! Also, it was at this point I realised, as far as I can tell, that there is no indication on your map whatsoever of where you actually are. I like how the officer in charge of this chateau seems completely unaware of what's going on despite the raging gunfight going on in his own foyer. I took their pictures. Oh sure, just take their picture, because if at any point they want to lay low, or go undercover, having their faces plastered all over the Allied newspapers would just be so helpful. Again, how did he plan to get these back home? He didn't appear to have an exit strategy, was it just hang around here till I run out of film and then go to Switzerland? Also, beyond the actions in France and one event at the end of the game, he never has a camera. Did he just discover it was too stressful to have to get the perfect shot as well? The city of Warsaw is becoming a ruins. Can you tell the developers may not have spoken English as a first language and that the localizers need their kneecaps removed? This is Warsaw! What the hell was that? Well, it came from the sky and smashed into your house. And since we don't have any aircraft or heavy guns, I can only consider it must have been an Axis weapon. I've got it! Kamikaze pigeons! It's the only explanation! Back in Warsaw, you have to aid the home army further in fighting the Germans. Ah, the 40s. Where petrol was so cheap you could just fling it at people. Them's are the days, all right. Ah, the classic Polish military strategy. Freeze in place and prevent the game from continuing because I have to follow one of you. Run, Nazis! Run, you coward! We've got them on the run! But keep your eyes open and shoot any stragglers! I'd just like to point out we are the ones burning people alive here and shooting them in the back. This is again where the game fails to live up to its potential. A gritty, hard-hitting look at the morality of waging a total war of resistance, a chance to make a profound statement of the nature of guerrilla warfare, change into Call of Duty behind enemy lines. It's really honestly quite a shame. Also, it truly missed out on its ability to do a crossover with Mark Echo's Getting Up contents under pressure. No! It is you who does not understand the gravity of our situation. If we do not succeed in taking back Warsaw and establishing a legitimate Polish government before the Russians arrive, Poland is finished! Finished! What? You don't trust this guy? Look at that face. Would he lie to you? Sniper! Hawkins, did you see the shooter? Of course I didn't. I can't see a bloody thing in this game. Hmm. Huh. Now where have I seen this before? I will also say, having a lot of respawning snipers does somewhat dampen the excitement and destroy the concept of a sniper duel. Good job. For a reporter. Where did you learn to shoot with a sniper rifle? Spain. It's a long story. Oh, so you're just going to hand wave his improbable skills away with Spain then, eh? I know what you're thinking. Maybe there'll be a flashback to the Spanish Civil War where you'll see him developing his skills and providing a bit of backstory to the Hawkins character. And simply by thinking that you have proven yourselves better storytellers than the entirety of the enemy front creative team. The time has come! Woo! We take past to now! now. Every man yeah. able to fight, we supply, oh, and prepare yeah. for assault! <laughs> 20 days of Ooh. spilling blood on the damn yeah. building! It's now! Ah. Well, now you're just screaming random vowels at me. Also, I'm fairly certain no amount of Molotov cocktails could destroy a Tiger too. Again, I ask, why am I being given the important job of blowing the wall? I know I'm useful to the Resistance, but don't they trust anybody else with this shit? Hawkins. We will join the assault. Well, I'm only there to collect parts for my radio. Too many people are obsessed with recapturing the past. Sorry. Also, spelling through as T-H-R-U. Really? Fucking really, game? Refer to my previous statement regarding localizers and kneecaps. After my articles on the French Resistance hit all the major front pages, I began to enjoy the benefits of the fame. The Allies were desperate for any good news coming out of Europe, and the resistance movement was the only shining light. 
I caught wind of the Norwegian operation to destroy the heavy water being manufactured and transported out of their country to feed the Nazi atomic weapons program. And I was given full access. Stop, 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 stop. I'm calling bullshit. Okay, so you have one of the most crucial raids of the Second World War, the mission to destroy Germany's heavy water production, and with that, their capability of creating an atomic bomb. And you send a fucking journalist? A team of crack Norwegian commandos trained for months together, some were even deployed on the glacier months in advance of the operation. The real-life team that was deployed on the glacier to wait, the scout party was called Operation Grouse, the main assault team joined them to become Operation Gunnicide. And a journalist who doesn't appear to speak word one of Norwegian. And don't tell me they're speaking Norwegian and it's translated for us, they're speaking English and you know it. I caught wind of the Norwegian operation to destroy the heavy water. How? It was a top fucking secret mission. You think that a journalist would have been able to hear about it? What kind of fucking security plan does the British Secret Service have anyway? We see again them giving the Germans a hint of character, then again relegating them to simple cannon fodder. Oh, and I wonder why this stealth mission went so loud. Could it be because we brought along a fucking journalist? It was nice of the cable car to wait for me to get in, wasn't it? You know, I don't need you telling me what to do, Pops. Until you prove yourself. I don't care what you think, newspaper man. I have trained with my men for six months, and I know what each of them will do before they do it. You? You're a liability that could get us all killed. So shut up and follow my lead if you want to live long enough to write your precious story. Thank you! Finally a character who talks some sense. Okay, one, very subtle use of the Panzerfaust there, buddy. And two... That was the most pathetic ambush I've ever seen. About four guys who barely bothered. Fear the Nazi war machine! <laughs> Wait, how the fuck did he get up here? I checked, the lift is the only way. Can he teleport now? Why aren't the Allies taking more advantage of their magical soldiers? The turbines are our objective. We're in the lead now. Also, why would the train commando let the journalist take the lead? After sabotaging the pumping station, you have to escape from the plant. Ah, this looks familiar as well. As you escape, you meet one of your team, who gives you some last breath information. Message for you, sir. Regarding the destruction of some heavy water that is ready to be shipped to Germany. Now, I feel I must stop here a minute and give a brief overview of the actual sabotage operation. So forgive my historical nature, but this is completely wrong. There were no casualties during Operation Gunnicide. In fact, the commando team only encountered one person in the whole plant, who was a Norwegian janitor who was happy to collaborate with them. Do you know why they only met one person? Because they were trained fucking commandos who knew that on an important stealth mission, deep behind enemy lines, you do not say, fire a fucking rocket launcher into a cable car! The reason I bring this up, besides the obvious historical fuckery, is that this could have been a very intense mission. A highly stealthy mission where you have to make your way into the plant. The tension is you avoid being spotted. The moment where you meet the janitor could have been brilliantly suspenseful. Nope, it said just fucking shoot him up, boys. Yeehaw! Ronberg was a real bastard. Yeah, he's such a bastard for caring about the success of his mission because he doesn't want, say it with me, kids, a fucking journalist in the way. Now, sabotaging the heavy water shipment was also an event that occurred in real life. The Resistance snuck a bomb aboard the cargo ship and sunk it in the middle of the lake. And of course, here you break into a heavily armed fortress, take out half a division of Germans, end up sinking a destroyer with a barrage of land based torpedoes. Okay, so, I saw we'd be firing torpedoes from a shore battery and immediately called bullshit. So I looked it up, and guess what? I was completely wrong. Yep, the fortress at Oskarsburg did in fact have torpedo tubes. They were instrumental during the Battle of Drobach Sound in the sinking of the German heavy cruiser Blücher, which directly led to the escape of the Norwegian Parliament and royal family from the Germans during the invasion of Norway. That would have been an interesting mission. Instead, we use it to fire torpedoes at a destroyer, which magically turns into a cargo ship in the cutscene, to destroy the heavy water. Oh wait, I couldn't forget the actual torpedo firing sequence is one of the most frustrating in the whole game. You can hear the destroyer, and produce some of the most pathetic explosions I've ever witnessed in a video game, but it seems to randomly decide to sink sometimes, and sometimes, oh you failed. And that's when they're not randomly missing, despite clearly going into the side of the ship. Oh well, at least the mission showed to me why the Allies' magical soldiers didn't tip the war in their favour. Witness the self-firing German cannon! Where do they get these wonderful toys? Cutting back to Warsaw, wait a minute. Is that his old cameraman behind him in this cutscene? Am I going insane? I will say the scene in the Home Army Hospital is fairly effectively brutal in its depiction of the horrors that these people went through. Though there are guys begging for water and our guy just takes a swig. 
What an asshole. This is all we have. Conserve your ammunition. Take out the ammo! See, there's no real incentive to conserve ammo, which could again have been a major gameplay factor in a less arcadey take on the resistance, because there's just a stockpile back there you can always resupply from. After fighting off more waves of Germans, you and your ally have an oddly random conversation about the futility of the conflict. I should have taken that dead man's jacket. It was covered in blood. It was warm. That is all that matters now. I'm sure this scene was meant to be poignant, but the slaughter here is really not presented much differently than anywhere else, so why should it feel different? Also, I have no idea what that comment meant because I don't ever recall seeing a dead man's jacket. Then we cut to- Johann Dietrich and I were a small part of Operation Crossbow, which was a coordinated effort to destroy the V2 rocket program that was hammering London and Western Europe. Oh, here we go again. Seriously? A vital, behind enemy lines mission to destroy the V2 rockets that are raining down on England, France and the Low Countries and we send this guy. Again? If you were convinced he spoke the other languages, then he definitely doesn't speak German, otherwise they'd be voiced in English too, wouldn't they? So we had to confirm that the target was a legitimate factory before the bombers would strike. On paper, it looked like a simple sabotage mission. Nothing you do is simple, mate. Oh, and your highly trained colleague gets immediately captured. Shit. You know a mission is fucked when the non-combatant who cannot speak the language is the more competent of the two. So you just have to break him out of prison. Get in, get Dietrich, get out. Quiet as a mouse. Okay, there has to be a way out. Think, Hawkins, think! Quiet as a mouse. Also, apparently sniper scopes in this universe shine out the back of my U-bend after the monthly cleanup. In another few hours, the sun will rise. After rescuing him, you make your way further into the base. A tank? Oh, come on! <laughs> However, what the Germans didn't know was the secret method of defeating a panzer. Just run around it. There is an intruder on the base, and you decide to continue the launch. You're an idiot. Wait, wait, Hawkins, you didn't close the door behind you again when you left? Are you okay, man? Oh, and look, our trained agent gets himself captured again. Damn it, Dietrich. Hold out until I can get to you. Um, you can get to him now. He's right over there. And there's only three of them. You've fought off worse odds. Just run over there and shoot. It ain't that tough to figure out. No? Okay, well I'm sure this'll end well. Yeah... Where am I being shot from? Was I just shot through the metal floor? That's interesting if true, because that would mean that wooden crates are far more effective at stopping bullets than metal gangways. Hmm... Okay, that is legitimately funny. Who knew the Second World War was so wacky? Oh no, wait, he is alright, he closes the door behind him. Even though he said specifically he's running out of time. My god... What the hell is this? Um, it's a V2. The thing you were sent to destroy. That thing you said earlier was... Impressive machine. You're a fucking idiot. Of course, because the bombers we called in won't hit this area, it's up to me to personally destroy this V2. I'm surprised the game didn't have me shoot it down with a revolver or something. And he just escapes. Um, how exactly? I could have gone west into the safety of the advancing Allied armies, but instead I headed east to Poland, to Warsaw where the greatest resistance battle of World War II had just begun. See, it's interesting that you should mention that the Warsaw Uprising had just begun. Earlier on, he stated that... Johann Dietrich and I were a small part of Operation Crossbow, which was a coordinated effort to destroy the V2 rocket program that was hammering London and Western Europe. This fascinates me because the first V2 launch took place on the 8th of September, after the Warsaw Uprising had already been going for a month. Now, in an earlier cutscene, he states that... Today is the 37th day of the Uprising. Since the uprising happened on the 1st of August, that would place him in Warsaw on September the 6th, two days before the first V2 launch. To which I can only conclude he got into Warsaw, got out of Warsaw, dropped into Germany, destroyed the V2, then forgot he'd already been in Warsaw, and walked back across Germany and Poland while not speaking either language and entering the city during the middle of a sea. Either that, or maybe the writers simply have no idea how to write a fucking historical piece about the timeline of the Warsaw Uprising, which should be especially galling to see our games as they're a fucking Polish company! What? Yeah. Did you question?
question this man before you brought him in? No, sir. Do you mind taking a look at that? Yeah! Oh, yeah! Whose base is in? Well, I'll give you three guesses. Ah, fuck it. Why do I even bother? They didn't care about their own fucking history. Why should I? Back in Warsaw, and guys, have you considered moving the radio? I know it's poignant and all to see the house destroyed around you, but it can't be very conducive to audio quality. You gotta think of your listeners, guys. Aufmachen! Im Namen Deutschland! Sofort diese Tür aufmachen! Open the door! Having finally resolved to abandon the city, you make your way to the River Vistula. The choice forward is yours. You can cover me from here, or you can advance into the depot and I'll cover you. I'm a better shot. Oh wait, of course. I forgot. Spain. After covering your comrade and then magically teleporting to the ground- Fuck you, I'm rolling with it! We make our way to the train depot, where one of our shots flings a German back like we're Steven fucking Seagal. Oh look, a downward slide into shit. How appropriate. The Germans begin to gas the sewers, so you have to run away from the air, and I'm having flashbacks to the happening again. After finally getting to the river, you have to cover the remaining civilians before heading to the boats. Oh look, a tank. Fortunately, I have this Panzerfaust to hand. So once again, you save the day, only this time to finally be hit by a German weapon. They look surprisingly good for a point-blank bomb hit. Oh gee, I wonder where we've seen this before. <laughs> oh, you just had to be bloody dramatic, didn't you? I get knocked down, but I get After finally making it across the river, Hawkins finds time for one last quick picture, in spite of never using the camera since France. I guess this will go into the For the Memories album, and that's it. Well, that was fucking abrupt. I could be more mad. Honestly, there's a mission in one of the special editions where you take part in the raid on San Nazaire to capture the Enigma machine, which is wrong on so many levels I cannot even be bothered to go into it. This game just isn't worth any more of our time. In summation, this game had the potential to be something fantastic. A survivalist take on guerrilla warfare where ammo conservation and stealth were crucial, and your eyes could be opened to the atrocities committed by both the Germans and the partisans themselves. But no. It just became another fucking shooter with another fucking stupid story shooting more fucking Nazis. Oh wait, I need one more fuck to finish my quota. Oh, I have it. FUCK THIS GAME!